Hi everyone, welcome back to my GS Medizi channel. Once again, I welcome each and every student on my YouTube channel. So, Namaskar Dosto, Swagat hai aapka GS Medizi channel pe. So, today we are going to start with the third portion of the current affairs for the month of November 2019, right? Already we have covered the two sessions till now. All those sessions have been uploaded on the YouTube, right? Two sessions ab tak main le chuka hoon, dono sessions aapke YouTube pe available hai, right? So those who have not subscribed to my GS Made Easy channel, I would request you all that please subscribe to this channel so that you should never miss any update regarding the current affairs, regarding any of the general study subjects which we will be teaching on this particular channel, right? Very soon we are going to come up with the special current affairs, right? Special current affair for the UP PCS examination. You know that already this examination has been scheduled, right? By the UP PSC, the state commission is there of Uttar Pradesh in the month of december right so we have to start the current affair preparation so approximately for last one year right last one year ka jo bhi current affair hoga special current affairs we are going to cover in this particular youtube channel only right so i would request you all that you can join this session so that those people who are appearing for the uppcs examination also they will also be getting the benefit out of the same right chaliye shuru karte hain fir aaj ka news dekhte hain so the next news is regarding the Scotch Tech 2019. What does exactly it stands for? It's the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Joint Exercise on the Urban Earthquake and Search, right, and Rescue, right. So this is the full form of this particular word. The latest edition of the same has been held in India, which was hosted by the NDRF, that is National Disaster Response Forces, right. So it basically aim was to rehearse the disaster response mechanism, share the knowledge, experience technology and also the mutual coordination etc right so these were the different type of aims which were being uh, there under this particular exercise right so the participants of all eight member countries ye eight member countries kiski hongi that is of the sco right like namely as china india kazakhstan kyrgyzstan pakistan right russia tajikistan and uzbekistan right so all these eight member countries shall be participating in this exercise right what was the main focus of this exercise just to ascertain the region's preparedness and their resilience towards the effective activation of the intergovernmental interaction for the immediate response the earthquakes have taken more than two lakh lives till now which basically accounts for the two-third of the disaster related mortality in the SCO countries right so SCO countries din ka naam bhi mention kiya maine upar china india kazakhstan kyrgyzstan pakistan etc right now let's study about the SCO right shanghai cooperation organization which is also known as shanghai pact right it is an eurasian political economic and the military organization that was founded in 2001 in shanghai please remember one thing it is the political economic and the military organization in the examination they can give you out of these three anyone right they can say it's a complete military organization it's a complete economic uh, organization it, it is focusing only on the political aspects between these eight countries no it is considering all the three important things that are the political economic as well as the military uh, aspects also right when we talk about the founding members of this SCO, remember one thing, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, right? So these are were the founding members at that point of time. So India and Pakistan, they were not the part of the founding members, right? So this is also one of the questions which can be given to you in the examination, right? The cooperation was for the name to Shanghai Cooperation Organization, right? After Uzbekistan joined the organization in 2001, right? So 2001 में जब Uzbekistan ने join किया तो उसका नाम change हो गया to Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Further moving on, what are the main goals of the SCO, right? So another important aspect which can be asked in the examination, SCO को बनाने का क्या goal क्या था या major aim क्या था, right? जैसे पहला लिखा हुआ है strengthening the mutual trust and neighborliness among the member states right so which are those member states total eight member states ke beech mein kaise hum neighborhood brotherhood ko phaila sake right how we can gain a trust a mutual trust between the these eight member states right another important goal was to promote the effective cooperation in the politics in the trade in the economy in the research sector in the technological sector and the culture as well as in the education energy transport tourism environmental pollution protection 
etc right so these are the areas which were basically been focused right while this particular organization was being framed further the goals were like efforts towards maintaining the and ensuring the peace and security and the stability in the region right which region we are talking about among all these eight member states right so all these eight member states in the region hai isme peace security stability sabko maintain karne ke liye bhi ek effort lagaya jayega moving towards the establishment of a democratic right fair and the rational new international political and the economic order should be there right when you talk about the present situation the seo comprises of eight member states already we have discussed the same that is the republic of india the republic of kazakhstan the people's republic of china the kings republic the islamic republic of pakistan the russian federation the republic of tajikistan and the republic of uzbekistan right so these are the eight permanent members of the seo right seo is also having the four observer states the names are islamic republic of afghanistan then we have a belarus then we have the iran and we have the mongolia right there are the six dialogue partners who are the part of this seo basically azerbaijan then armenia then we have cambodia then we have the nepal then we have turkey and then we have the socialist republic of sri lanka right so remember all these details i have already uh, written in a bold form so definitely they are important from the examination perspective right because from these uh, you can say these member states the observer states the dialogue partners the upsc can play or can can make a question right from these three important sentences right so please focus on these eight sentence uh, three sentences they are much more important from the examination perspective right further the next news is regarding the global microscope on the financial inclusion report right so first important thing aapko ek cheez dhyan rakhna jab bhi report ke bare mein koi bhi question aata hai to ek question aapke dimag mein ya even examiner ke paas bhi ek hi question hota hai ki kaun wo report publish karta hai then we should be knowing that which uh, report with respect to the india findings right india ke uh, ke liye us report mein kya cheeze mentioned hai wo important ho jati hai automatically थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट चीज जो रिपोर्ट या इंडेक्सेस में ध्यान देना वो देखना होता है कौन कौन से पैरामीटर्स को कंसिडर किया गया वाइल यू कैन से फाइनलाइजिंग दैट रिपोर्ट और गेटिंग द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ दैट रिपोर्ट राइट सो दीज आर द थ्री मेजर इंपॉर्टेंट एरियाज वेर यू नीड टू फोकस वाइल स्टडिंग एनी रिपोर्ट और द इंडेक्स राइट द फर्स्ट वन इज बेसिकली लाइक द इकोनॉमिस्ट इंटेलिजेंस यूनिट विच वॉज रिलीज इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन राइट सो रिमेंबर वन थिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर रिपोर्ट हैज बीन रिलीज बाय हूम बैट इज बैट इज बाई द ई आई यू राइट ई आई यू ने इसको रिलीज किया है टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन के एडिशन द टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन से एडिशन ऑफ ग्लोबल माइक्रोस्कोप रिपोर्ट हैज इलेवन न्यू जेंडर बेस्ड इंडिकेटर्स तो याद रखने की बात है ग्यारह नए जेंडर बेस्ड इंडिकेटर्स लाए गए हैं विच बेसिकली मेजर्स the financial inclusion for both the women as well as the men right now let's study something about the report already we know that it is published by whom eiu right it's a research and the analysis division of the economist group right so eiu was basically created in 1946 it is the world leader in the global business intelligence right further the first microscopic report or the microscope report you can say that was published in 2007 and was originally developed right for the countries in the latin american and the caribbean regions but in 2009 this report was been expanded into a global study right the report is basically the benchmark index that assesses the enabling environment for the financial access in 55 countries across the five categories right so hamare exam ke liye kya important ho jata hai ye panch categories kon kon si hain so the next topic is the five parameters across which the countries will be access right are like government and the policy support right so how what is the governments and the policy support for financial access in that country this will be taken into account second one is the products and the outlets right what are the different products which are available for the financial access in that country what are the different outlets which are been available this is will be taken into consideration third stability and integrity fourth consumer protection fifth infrastructure right so these are the five different parameters right across which all the countries will be assessed and then the ranking will be given now further when we talk about the specific findings in the report with regard to india so this report says that india is among the top nations with most conducive environment for the financial inclusion in terms of the allowing the non bank to issue the e money effective consumer protection and etc 
right when we talk about allowing the non banks it could be your nbfcs that is the non banking financial companies right nbfcs jaise ek example hum log le lete hain life insurance corporation of india right it is one of the nbfcs so basically it's a non bank it's it's not a bank which is accepting your uh, making any account saving accounts current account like that right but it is an nbfc now this nbfc is also issuing some e kinds of e money it is also giving an effective consumer protection right i'm not talking with regard to only lic right many nbfcs are available in india right so it is said that in that report that india is among the top nations right with the most conducive environment with the most supportive environment for the financial inclusion in the terms of allowing the non banks also to issue the e money and also provide the effective consumer protection the overall environment for the financial inclusion has improved globally with india colombia peru uruguay and mexico having the most favorable conditions for the inclusive finance with the overall framework for promoting the digital financial inclusion as you know after the demonetization in 2016 right today we are celebrating the third anniversary of the same right uh, on the 8th of november 2019 right uh, you we, everyone knows about the same that after demonetization the government of india has put a lot of efforts in pushing the digital transaction in the country right so with the overall framework for the promotion of the digital financial inclusion the report states that the four basic enablers that is allowing the non banks to issue the e money the presence of the financial service agents jinko hum log bank mitra ke naam se bhi jante hain certain outlets have been opened right uh, banking uh, you can say service persons have been uh, given they have been given a particular place in the rural areas also for the people so that they can also transfer their monies they can also do the digital transactions etc proportionate customer due diligence and the effective financial consumer protection right so these are the four basic enablers which is basically promoting the digital financial inclusion in india right further this report says that india was among the top countries that safeguard the e money via some sort of the deposit insurance or by the protection right so these were the key findings in this report regard to india now what were the efforts by the india right india ne is particular sector mein kya aisa effort kiya jisse ye result samne aaya jaise in india the reserve bank of india has prepared the national strategy for the financial inclusion to deepen the financial services coverage in the country especially in the rural area so this particular draft policy or you can say this draft has been prepared and it is expected that by the end of the year uh, 2019 right we are going to get the complete report right as well as this particular uh, you can say the draft which has been prepared by the reserve bank of india will be operational or will cover the upcoming five year period right reserve bank of india has also set up a high level committee to review the existing status of digitization in india and also devise a medium uh, term strategy for increasing the digital payments transactions in india right so how what is the way by which we can actually increase the digital payments transaction in india right so this strategy has also been chalked out by the reserve bank of india in 2019 that is in the month of august reserve bank of india has also released the enabling framework for the regulatory sandbox i think this portion was also there in the news in the last month also regarding the regulatory sandbox right in case if you have missed it you have not studied it do not worry we'll be covering the same in the upcoming classes right so which created the basis for the regulatory sandbox and that will actually allow the fintechs that is the financial technical institutions sorry technical uh, companies the startups to light as the innovative products and the services being being launched by the reserve bank of india right so this was a global microscope on the financial inclusion report recently published by the eiu right so please remember the five parameters the publishing organization right once again i request you all that uh, on my unacademy channel right uh, when you download the unacademy's learning app right unacademy ka learning app download karke aur jab aap meri profile search karoge chetan gorav ke naam se aapko profile milegi right wahan pe ek particular course bana hai jiska pura naam rakha gaya tha reports and indexes right i have covered in a very comprehensive manner so you can just uh, see that particular video right you can note down all the important information updated uh, video of the same version will be 
uh, uploaded on my YouTube channel in the upcoming days since I have started making the videos recently only so just will be requiring some more time to gather all the data once the data will be prepared then in a day you will be getting more than two or three or four videos right on this my channel right so as if now we have planned it so let's see till that date if you want to study about the reports and indexes you can go to download the unacademy's learning app or you can visit to the unacademy's website also right there also you can search my name chetan gaurav and then follow my profile in my profile you will be getting one free lecture that is completely on the report and indexes right L last year only i have made it so i think you will be oh, will be doing one homework only that you will be updating the ranks rest everything will be remaining the same right chalo आगे बढ़ते हैं नेक्स्ट न्यूज की तरफ द नेक्स्ट न्यूज इज रिगार्डिंग द रेड एटलेस एक्शन प्लान मैप एटलेस एंड द सी फ्लोज चेन्नई राइट सो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली दिस एटलेस इज ऑल अबाउट सो इट इज द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड रेडी रेकनर मैप व्हिच इज प्रिपेयर्ड बाय द व्हिच मिनिस्ट्री द यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ अर्थ साइंसेस फॉर व्हाट जस्ट टू हेल्प द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ तमिलनाडु इन द इफेक्टिव फ्लड मिटिगेशंस इन चेन्नई व्हिच विटनेस्ड द वर्स्ट सिचुएशन right in 2015 i think everyone remembers about the same right how badly this chennai was been affected by the uh, flood right in 2015 so with respect to that only it's a first kind you can say it's a of the it's a first of its own kind a ready reckoner map has been prepared by the earth sciences ministry right now this particular atlas will be focusing at the flood mitigations about the preparedness about the operations and the management aspects management aspects during the flood situations right so these are the major key areas which have been focused in this atlas the manual besides showcasing the probable scenarios for the different rainfall periods will also provide the information on the corporation wards that are likely to be affected due to the flooding and the areas that may need an evacuation in the chennai by taking into account all the historical data sets right now let's study about the sea flows chennai sea flows it's the full form is the coastal flooding warning system app right so it's an application for especially for the chennai this application is launched by the national institute of ocean technology right niot sea flows is basically the india's first integrated coastal flood warning system right it is integrated with the gis that is geographical information system based decision support system to provide the forecast on the potential threat or the danger 10 days well in advance right so 10 din pehle hi aapko pata chal jayega ki is particular area mein koi threat hai with regard to the flood right so flood warning system hai ye right it is going to warn the people who are living in that area 10 days well in advance right it will be hosted and made operational at national center for the coastal research that is nccr with the meteorological data inputs coming from indian meteorological department imd the national center for the medium range weather forecasting that is ncm rwf and the indian national center for the ocean information services that is nquis further this particular system can also stimulate the scenario and can predict what will happen in a particular area right so this all will be uh, you can say will be covered under the sea flows now here we have come across one particular organization you can say a kind of a national institute of ocean technology let's study about the same right so remember one thing this uh, this particular institute was established in 1993 again this month is not important year can be important right it is an autonomous body which uh, sorry society which is working under the ministry of earth sciences right niot has developed the niche technologies to mine the manganese nodules coming from the deep sea and has also developed several deep sea systems like remotely operable vehicles and it is also striving hard to bring india on par with the developed nations in the area of the ocean technology this niot will be the nodal institutions for the implementing the proposed deep ocean mission right so deep ocean mission by the government of india has been announced so this particular institute will be the nodal institution for the same which encompasses all the areas of ocean technology like the development of the manned submersible uh, 
then we have the offshore large scale desalinization plants we have the ocean thermal energy con uh, conversion plants extensive survey of the oceans acquisitions of the new ships etc right so these are the different type of mandate which has been given to this particular niot for the same right so this was the one of the news coming from the ministry of the earth sciences once again let's see the next news next news is regarding the india international science festival iisf right so the fifth india international science festival is basically held at being kolkata right so please remember jo panchwa india international science festival hai wo kahan pe held hua hai kolkata mein right objective kya tha is bar ka to instill the scientific temper among the masses showcase the india's contributions in the field of science and technology over the years encourage the translation of its benefits to the people it basically aims to build a strategy for the inclusive advancement of the science and technology india international science festival is an annual event which is organized jointly by the science and technology created by the ministries and the departments of the government of india and vigna bharti vibha bharti you can say the theme for this year was rise in india that is research innovation science empowering the nation right so this is the full form of this uh, rise in india right so this is the theme for this year right so the fifth indian uh, india international science festival is being held at kolkata recently you might have seen also our prime minister has spoken about the science and technology the importance of the same in this particular festival right the next news is regarding the dust link 2019 right so again it's a very first ever Uh, India and Uzbekistan joint exercise which has been held in Tashkent in Uzbekistan the exercise will enable the sharing of the best practices and the experiences between the armed forces of the two countries that would actually lead to the greater op operational effectiveness right the primary focus will be again on the counter terrorism right so again for the examination you should remember about this particular name dust lake it is not any term related to the science and technology it is not any new innovation it is the joint you can say it's a joint military exercise right so it's a joint military exercise between between that is india and uzbekistan right this thing you should remember uh, recently it has been held where in tashkent right tashkent mein recently held hui hai right uh, एक बार और ध्यान रखना है कि जितनी भी जॉइंट एक्सरसाइजेस का वीडियो है आई विल बी अपलोडिंग ऑन द यूट्यूब चैनल डोंट वरी राइट अभी uh, एक महीना और हो जाए बाकी जितनी भी एक्सरसाइजेस होनी होंगी फिर पूरे लास्ट वन ईयर में जितनी भी एक्सरसाइजेस हुई हैं वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ कम्प्लीट वन वीडियो ऑन द सेम राइट सो यू विल बी गेटिंग डोंट हैव टू रन समवेयर एल्स टू फाइंड द अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ मिलिट्री एक्सरसाइजेज राइट सो वी आर मेकिंग द नोट्स फॉर द सेम होपफुली राइट बाई द एंड ऑफ दिस मंथ विल बी अपलोडिंग वन वीडियो on the joint military exercises joint naval exercises joint uh, you can say the ye aapki water wali navy ki jitni bhi exercises hai jitne bhi tarike ki exercises india ke sath conduct hoti hain within the india conduct hoti hain everything we are going to cover in a comprehensive manner over there right so these were the current affairs apart from this the next one is the skills build platform right so remember one thing the ministry of skill development and the entrepreneurship has launched this particular platform in collaboration with the ibm it's a private company it's an it uh, firm you can say the directorate general of training that is D dgt under the aegis of the ministry of skill development and the entrepreneurship is the nodal organization for the same right so this particular directorate has actually launched this platform right which is working under the ministry of skill development and the entrepreneurship right now as a part of this program the two year advanced diploma in it networking and cloud computing comma uh, that is you can say co created and designed by the ibm right so the ibm is the uh, brain child you can say which is basically going to uh, have the two year advanced diploma in the it in the networking sector in the cloud computing sector that will be offered at a industrial training institutes and the national skill training institutes right is ns ti's right the platform will be extended to train the iti's the national skill training institutes faculty on building the skills in the artificial intelligence also right so just remember one thing skills build platform has been launched by the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship in collaboration with the ibm what they are going to do it's a part under this particular program two year advanced diploma in the it networking cloud computing 
you can say some kind of a computer related courses will be created and designed by the ibm that will be offered in the at the industrial training institutes that is itis and the national skill training institutes the relevance of this program was that the digital platform will provide a personal assessment of the cognitive abilities and the personality of the students further they will also these students are going to learn the foundational knowledge about the digital technologies as well as they are going to have some professional skills such as like resume writing problem solving and communicating with the different people further the students will also receive the recommendations on the role based educations for the specific jobs that will include the technical and the professional learning this initiative is basically the part of the ibms global commitment to create a job ready workforce to build the next generation of the skills which are needed for the new collar careers right so this was the news regarding the skill build platform the next important news is regarding the regional comprehensive economic partnership that is rcep i think many of you might have read this particular in the newspapers also in the recent days right so we have come to know that india has finally decided not to join this rcep right so it is mentioned in the first line that it in the recently held regional comprehensive economic partnership summit which was held in thailand that is in india decided not to go with the rcep uh, uh, trade deal as if now as it may hurt the domestic sector of the india badly right so this was the reason which was given by the prime minister also by the you can say the external affairs minister also regarding the same that india has finally decided that we are not going to join the rcep as if now why because it is going to actually hurt our own domestic sector india has expressed its concerns or over the lowering and the elimination of the traf, uh, tariffs on the products from the other countries at as it would negatively affect the domestic agriculture and the industrial sector right majorly hamara jo agriculture sector hai wo hurt ho raha tha jo industrial sector tha wo hurt hota agar hum rcep ke member ban jate ye rcep hai kya right iske bare mein dekh lete hain the regional comprehensive economic partnership ek free trade agreement hai yaad rakhna ye free trade agreement hai right originally it was devised to consist of 16 countries across the asia pacific region right so it's a free trade agreement between these 16 countries originally when it was devised right the pact was to have nil or to drop the tariffs right means koi bhi tariff nahi hoga bilkul kam tariff honge and the duties between the member countries so that the goods and the services can flow very freely between these 16 countries to so major iska kaam sirf itna tha ki kuch products select kiye jayenge right in 16 countries ke beech mein kabhi bhi product ka जो भी आन, आपका कह सकते हो एक्सपोर्ट इंपोर्ट होगा वो हमेशा फ्री रहेगा राइट आर सी पीस एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कोर इज बेसिकली दी आसियान राइट आसियान क्या है आसियान इज एन इंटर गवर्नमेंटल ग्रुपिंग ऑफ टेन साउथ ईस्ट एशियन कंट्रीज नेमली एस ब्रुनाय कंबोडिया इंडोनेशिया लाओस मलेशिया म्यांमार फिलीपींस सिंगापुर थाईलैंड and vietnam right so these are the 10 countries which southeast asian countries which are the part of the asean it was proposed that the asean bloc will be joined by the six dialogue partners you can see that india is not the part of the same and one more thing this year when the government was being framed in 2019 the second government india government all the asean leaders were being called as a special guest for the swearing in ceremony right so it was proposed that asean bloc will be joined by the six dialogue partners kon kon china japan india south korea australia and new zealand right so please remember these are the six dialogue partners of the asean india is not the member but the dialogue member right dialogue member hai but member nahi hai full time member nahi hai aapke asean ka right so this can also be one of the statements in your examination further going on now there is a one in uh, confederation of the indian industry cii they have supported for signing the same right unne is cheez ko support kiya tha ki nahi india ko rcep ko sign karna chahiye tha kyun unne reason diya the trade within the rcep nations would increase how and india can leverage the advantage in the areas of ict information communication technology it enabled services 
हेल्थ केयर सेक्टर एंड एजुकेशन सर्विसेज सो दे वर से दैट यू कैन निग्लेक्ट दिस डोमेस्टिक एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर यू कैन डिवाइज सम अनदर पॉलिसी फॉर देम यू कैन गिव सम बूस्टर पैकेज टू द इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर यू कैन सेव देम बट दीज एरियाज आर मच मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड दीज एरियाज आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू गेट अ गुड एडवांटेज फ्रॉम दीज सिक्सटीन नेशंस दिस इज वॉज सेट बाय सी आई आई इट ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर द इंडिया टू टैप द लार्ज एंड द वाइब्रेंट इकोनमीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड इंक्रीज इट्स एक्सपोर्ट राइट सो इट इज सेट दैट इंडिया इज गोइंग टू गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी राइट टू टैप द लार्ज एंड द वाइब्रेंट इकोनमीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड इंडिया कैन एक्चुअली यूटिलाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर एरिया दिस ट्रेड डील राइट टू इंक्रीज इट्स एक्सपोर्ट हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बहुत बढ़ जाएगा एज द आर सी पी प्रोग्रेस द फेवरेबल टैरिफ्स एंड द रूल्स ऑफ ओरिजिन विल किक इन एंड इंडिया कैन बिकम अ मेजर हब फॉर कोऑर्डिनेटिंग द रीजनल वैल्यू चेंज थ्रू इट्स सो इन शॉर्ट दे वर ट्राइंग टू से दैट इंडिया विल बिकम अ मेजर कंट्री विच इज गोइंग टू कोऑर्डिनेट the regional value chain for every country in the upcoming time india could also serve not only as the major market for the final markets but also the base for the third country exports primarily to the west asia africa and europe but our farmers who are belonging to the agriculture sector they were against this deal what is the reason for the same the first one was the trade tariffs farmers was uh, were actually in fear that if the rcp will actually permanently bring down the import duties right on the most of the agriculture commodities to zero right because agar rcp sign kar diya to tariffs zero ho jayenge agriculture products pe as a result of which the import duties will be bring uh, their duties will be reduced to zero and this will actually lead to the countries to looking to dump their agricultural produce in india which would lead to the drastic drop in the prices राइट सो जो कंट्रीज के पास एक्स्ट्रा प्रोडक्शन है एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में राइट वो अपना सारा सामान हमारे इंडिया में डम कर सकते हैं और जब हमारे इंडिया में डम कर देंगे तो हमारा जो डोमेस्टिक सेक्टर है एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर है वो बहुत बैडली हर्ट होगा क्यों क्योंकि फिर उनको कॉम्पिटेटिव प्राइजेस नहीं मिलेंगे राइट क्योंकि ज़्यादा सामान आ चुका है मार्केट में सस्ते दाम में आ चुका है तो हमारे इंडिया का एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूस नहीं उतना ज़्यादा फायदे में रहेगा दिस विल ऑल्सो एग्रीवेट दी एग्रेरियन क्राइसिस इवन एज द इनपुट प्राइजेज इन इंडिया आर हेवली टैक्सड राइट एंड द फार्मर्स आर नॉट गिवन दी प्रॉफिटेबल प्राइसेस रिजल्टिंग इन द सब्सटेंशियल लॉसेज एंड द फार्मर्स गोइंग इन द डेट्स द डेरी सेक्टर एंड द प्लांटेशन सेक्टर दे आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू हिट वेरी हार्ड राइट सो डेरी सेक्टर वॉज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द सेक्टर विच वॉज वेरी मच इन फेयर दैट इफ आर सी पी वुल बी साइन then we are also going to hit why because the milk products coming from the new zealand or the australia because they are also the part of the rcp will actually lead to their dumping of their dairy products in india because wahan pe dairy products bahut saste hain aapke new zealands mein aur australia mein right aur wo apna sara saman kahan dump kar denge they will be sending their uh, things in india right at a very lower rate then our dairy sector will be hurt right the southeast asian countries they have a larger and a cheaper production of the plantation crops like rubber coconut palm oil as compared to the india and opening up the markets will actually lead to the large inflow of these products given their prices competitiveness the ipr clause that is the intellectual property rights clauses are likely to the serious impinge on the farmers seeds freedom the seed companies will actually get more power to protect their intellectual property rights and the farmers will be criminalized when they save and exchange the seeds you know that seeds can be saved can be exchanged in the monsoon seasons also right by the farmers but they cannot do if these particular companies if this rcp was signed and then these seeds companies coming from the different different countries they will be having the ipr for the same they will say it's my intellectual property right it's my right on the seed you cannot save it and exchange it or sell it within the india you have to take the permission from us then only we will do the same and when you are going to take the permission you have to pay to us right so this was also one of the reasons india's food sovereignty would also be put at stake at opening up the markets will actually lead to the dependence on the foreign imports any differences in the future might impact the food import supply also 
राइट right? बिकॉज अगर हम उस पर डिपेंड हो जाएंगे और कोई भी ऐसे फ्यूचर में मान लीजिए किसी भी कंट्री के साथ हमारे रिश्ते खराब हो गए या कोई डिफरेंसेस हो गए देन दिस में ऑल्सो इफेक्ट दी फूड इम्पोर्ट सप्लाई ऑल्सो सो दीज वर द सम रीजन्स यू कैन से विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी फार्मर्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी सी आई दो जूवर इन सपोर्ट दो जूवर अगेंस्ट एंड फाइनली द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट डिसाइडेड दैट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू साइन दिस डील बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू hurt our agriculture sector very badly as well as the industrial sector right so this was one of the news regarding the rcep remember the name of the countries what exactly the rcep is all about these are the two possible questions which you may get in the examination right these are the areas that why this particular uh, cii was in support why the farmers were very much in fear right so these are the uh, areas of the mains examination right where you need to actually elaborate right about this particular topic but for the examination perspective this first slide which is right now currently available in front of you is much more than enough from the examination perspective chaliye the next news is regarding the agreement on the reciprocal logistic support so arls so again this particular agreement has been signed between the india and russia actually not signed they are finalizing a defense agreement it's a defense agreement which has been finalized between russia and india that will actually simplify the interoperability and enable the military platforms to receive the support and the supplies across the bases in both the nations that is known as the agreement on the reciprocal logistic support in it is an arrangement that will actually allow access to the india and russia to each other the military facilities for supplies and the fuel expanding the logistic supports and the operational turnaround of the indian military what is the significance of the same this will be beneficial for the indian navy which has the very large number of the russian origin ships and that will get access to the russian ports for the supplies and the refueling it would be very much crucial for the joint exercises also the indian air force will also be benefited by easily de deploying their aircrafts for the same purpose this access will also be for the ports which are located in the russian part of the arctic allowing the access to the energy resources there also russia on the another hand will be able to access the indian ports and the air bases in russia has also assured the india access to the energy resources in the vast arctic region right so this is the last line which is very very important right because india is looking over the energy resources which are there in the arctic region further the next news is regarding the ice dash and atithi for improved custom clearances right so these are the two apps the two new it initiatives you can say one is ice dash another is atithi right have been launched for the improved monitoring and the pace of the custom clearances of the imported goods and facilitating the arriving the international passengers right so whatever the international passengers which are they are arriving in india right for the improved monitoring and the pace of the custom clearance because lot of people they keep on complaining when we basically bring the products from the another country to the india right the custom clearance takes a lot of time we we generally waste a lot of time in india uh, while doing giving getting the custom clearances right so these two it initiatives have been launched just for the improved monitoring and the improved pace of custom clearances of the imported goods and for the people who are arriving at the indian airports right ice dash is basically an ease of doing business monitoring dashboard of the indian customs helping the public see the daily custom clearance items of the import cargo at a various ports and the airports this atithi app right atithi app it basically facilitates the hassle free and the faster clearances by the customs at the airports and it will enhance the experience of the international tourist and the other visitors at the airports right so atithi app or ice dash ice ka full form uh, ice dash is, uh, it's not having any full form but it's an ease of doing business monitoring dashboard dashboard right so it's of indian custom only right so this is the regarding the ice dash and the atithi app for the improved custom clearances so these were the news for today's session i hope uh, everyone has liked this session thank you so much for watching the classes sabhi ka dhanyawad is classes ko dekhne ke liye agar aapki koi bhi query hai koi bhi doubt hai man mein koi bhi sawal hai to aap mere ko facebook page pe right i think many of you are on the facebook page 
फेसबुक पेज पे आप जाके सर्च बार में चेतन जीआरबी टाइप करेंगे जो फ्रंट में फोटो आई थी वो लगी हुई है उस पेज पे आप उस पेज को लाइक कर लें राइट उस पेज को फॉलो कर लें और आप वहाँ पे मैसेज में मेरे को बता सकते हैं राइट ये आपके पास ऑप्शन है हमारे पास अभी रीच आउट करने के लिए इन दी अपकमिंग फ्यू डेज वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ टेलीग्राम चैनल देयर ऑल्सो यू कैन ऑल्सो गेट इन टच विथ अस राइट आई विल बी वेरी सून रिलीजिंग ई मेल आई डी ऑल्सो एज इफ नाउ हमारी जी एस मेडिजी की एक uh, आपको uh, मैं आपको वो बता देता हूँ ई मेल आई डी है मेडिजी जी एस एट द रेट ऑफ जी मेल डॉट कॉम राइट इस पर भी आप अपनी क्वेरीज लिख सकते हो इसका लिंक राइट इस पर्टिकुलर जी मेल आई डी का लिंक भी आपको डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में मिल जाएगा यूट्यूब चैनल पर और आप वहाँ पर भी इस वीडियो के भी uh, आपके डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में मिल जाएगा राइट वहाँ पर भी जाके आप वहाँ से कॉपी करके और हमें मेल भी कर सकते हैं अगर आपकी कोई भी क्वेरी है कुछ भी है राइट आपके मन में कोई भी डाउट है यू कैन रीच मी एंड फॉलो माय क्लासेस वेरी सून जो इनिशिएटिव मैंने आपको बताया है दो स्टूडेंट्स हु आर गोइंग टू गिव द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ यू पी पी सी एस टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन राइट विच इज़ गोइंग टू हेल्ड इन दी मंथ ऑफ दिसंबर टू उनके लिए हम लोग एक स्पेशल राइट एक स्पेशल करंट अफेयर की क्लासेज ला रहे हैं जो सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपके यू को ही फोकस करेगी राइट right? सो so, ये ऑलमोस्ट यू कैन से वन और टू लाइनर टाइप की न्यूज होगी विच विल बी कवरिंग दिव ऑल दी एरियाज राइट ऑल दी एरिया से मतलब हो गया विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दी पॉलिटी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दी योर इकोनमी देन जोग्राफी देन इन्वायरमेंट साइंस एंड टेक राइट देन विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दी नेशनल इवेंट्स राइट देन दी इंटरनेशनल इवेंट्स दैट इज द इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन से रिलेटेड जो भी क्वेश्चन होंगे राइट right? और यूपी के लिए स्पेशल नॉलेज राइट स्पेशल जीके जो यूपी की स्पेशल जीके होगी वो भी हम लोग कवर करेंगे तो ये पूरी कंप्लीट सीरीज चलेगी वेरी सुन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द सेम राइट ऑन दिस चैनल ओनली सो कीप वाचिंग माय चैनल सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल एंड आल्सो लाइक माय वीडियोस इफ यू थिंक दैट दे आर बेनिफिटिंग द सेम राइट सो थैंक यू सो मच वंस अगेन आई विल मीट यू ऑन दी अनदर डे with the rest of the current affairs for the month of november hopefully we have covered till the month of oh sorry till the uh, 5th of november or 6th of november ek ya do din ki current affairs aur ikattha ho jaye then we'll be again making a class for the same right like this we'll we'll be continuing this series do not worry right till the your next upcoming upsc examination which is going to held in the month of may 2020 that's all from my side bye bye take care fir milenge agli class mein